You can shop like C5 is still going on, even if you never set foot in Orlando. And what's up with LucasArts? It's Friday, August 27th, and you'll hear about those stories and more this week in Star Wars. This Week in Star Wars is your source for new and noteworthy developments from the galaxy far, far away. I'm your host, Matt Fox. And now, this week's lead story. While C5 has been over for more than a week, and the whole four-day adventure may seem like it was a lifetime ago, but those of us who were there could at least take solace in the fact that as our memories faded with age, we would have our exclusive Star Wars Celebration 5 merchandise to remind us of those bucolic days in Orlando. Well, not so fast, my friend. All of that exclusive gear is now up for sale on StarWarsShop.com, so that even those who never even thought of coming down to the Sunshine State can load up on all the same swag that none of the attendees seem to think was worth picking up during the show. It just isn't fair. Lando Calrissian disguise kits, one-armed wampas, coffee mugs, and assorted t-shirts went live several days ago, and as of today, much of the remaining C5 Artist Alley artwork is also available. Both of Hasbro's exclusive Action Figure 2 packs are available for purchase at the HasbroToyShop.com, as well as the Comic-Con exclusive 2-pack as well. In other news this week, the one thing that Hasbro did sell out of at Star Wars Celebration 5 were the case packs of the Vintage Collection Wave 2, which features characters predominantly from Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith. As you recall from previous podcasts, Hasbro is resurrecting the Ultimate Galactic Hunt chase figure program from previous years. For 2010, the UGG program features 12 different figures from Waves 1 and 2 of the Vintage Collection with foil stamped borders on the card back. If you were lucky enough at Celebration 5 to purchase each of the three cases, you would, as a result, have a complete set of the 2010 UGG line. Well, inevitably, those figures are now beginning to show up at retail. There have been multiple reports on various collecting websites of Wave 2 of the Vintage Collection showing up at Toys R Us's, predominantly in the western United States. These new sightings have included several of the UGG figures. So, if chasing down allegedly rare figures that aren't really that much rarer than all the other figures in the case, your time is now. Also spotted recently is the Toys R Us exclusive The Rise of Boba Fett Ultimate Battle Pack, which for the bargain price of $100 includes a new Slave One, a Mace Windu Jedi Starfighter, and five figures. While you're out the House of Giraffe, keep an eye out for the vintage packaged at which also has been spotted across the country. Both of these three figure items have been sporadically available on ToysRUs.com, as well as the exclusive, but not yet seen in stores, Clone Wars Nikto Guard action figure. Sideshow has recently made available two new items. First was the Fall of the Empire Polystone Diorama, which features vicious-looking Ewoks, not too dissimilar from angry gremlins, attacking a stormtrooper. Also now available is a 12-inch figure of Commander Cody. The exclusive version is sold out and open now only as a waitlist item, but the regular edition is still available for pre-order. The sixth print in the 30th anniversary Empire Strikes Back art collection was made available today on StarWarsShop.com and features artwork by Russell Walks. This piece depicts Luke Skywalker's face inside the helmet of Darth Vader as seen in the cave duel scene of The Empire Strikes Back. Print number 7, which will be available at the end of September, is by artist Katie Cook and is an interpretation of the bounty hunter gathering scene on the Star Destroyer Executor in Episode 5. Video game news this week. Website Kotaku reported last week 
that the new president of LucasArts, Paul Megan, had axed The Force Unleashed Part 3. While The Force Unleashed Part 2 has yet to reach stores and is scheduled for a late October arrival, there had been no previous confirmation that a third part was even under development until these reports surfaced. Kotaku's story further reports that not only had Megan axed Part 3 of the best-selling Star Wars game of all time, but had also suspended all agreements with outside publishing houses to develop future Star Wars titles, which would mean, in effect, that following the release of already announced titles, there would be no new Knights of the Old Republic titles from BioWare or future LEGO releases from Traveler's Tales. Kotaku's story was picked up by several other websites, including GameInformer.com. However, there has been no further confirmation on the Kotaku site or on any other site, but nor have there been any denials either. If this story is true, it would explain the departure of Hayden Blackman that was reported earlier this month. But until there is additional confirmation, this report should probably be taken with a grain of salt. One computer title that did come out this week was for the iPod and iPod Touch. THQ's Vader Yourself is available in the iTunes App Store for 99 cents. The app allegedly allows users to record their voice and have it modified into Darth Vader-like speech but in effect really just sort of makes them sound like a character from Silence of the Lambs. The app allows users to save their recordings and even share them via email with friends, enemies, and prospective girlfriends. This book is devastating. The holiday season must be approaching as fancy new Star Wars books are reaching stores at a fast and furious clip. In addition to the Star Wars year-by-year book, which was released at the time of Celebration 5, Star Wars bibliophiles can now order The Sounds of Star Wars. This sizable book by J.W. Rensler features several hundred photographs as well as actual audio recordings of over 250 of the sounds from the Star Wars movies. Both of these titles are available at booksellers across the country, as well as Amazon.com. If you do choose to order these books online, I encourage you to use the This Week in Star Wars Affiliates link on our homepage. This week's Dark Horse title was Blood Ties No. 1, first of a multi-generational tale featuring Django and Boba Fett. It is available at local comic book stores across the country. In miscellaneous Star Wars news this week, Michael Giacchino, the composer responsible for the music of the television series Lost, a number of Pixar films, as well as the 2009 reboot of Star Trek, is allegedly, according to several websites, going to compose the music for the new, revamped Star Tours ride. While waiting for official confirmation of this report, you can watch the trailer for Star Tours 2 on BigShinyRobot.com. This trailer made its debut at the last Whatever to Endor event Saturday night during Star Wars Celebration 5 at the Disney Hollywood Studios. George Lucas has his lawyers on the march again. This time their target is Jedi Mind, Inc. According to the Lucasfilm complaint, Jedi Mind, Inc. is marketing a line of computer applications that allow users to control objects within the games through the force of their thoughts which, in this case, are manifested in the form of a wireless headset. According to TheHollywoodReporter.com, the bearded flannel-wearing one is seeking $5 million in damages for trademark infringement. Two other news items that aren't directly Star Wars related this week, but I feel appropriate to mention here. First, Robot Chicken creators Seth Green and Matt Seinreich won the Emmy Award for Best Short Form Animated Program. Also in the news is a new film from Gary Kurtz, the producer of Star Wars and The Empire Strikes Back. Panzer 88 is being described as a hybrid World War II tank movie meets supernatural thriller. 
Filming is expected to begin this winter. I mentioned that last story about Gary Kurtz's upcoming film primarily because of all the things I saw during the four days of Celebration 5. Perhaps the most entertaining and memorable was the Gary Kurtz panel that I went to on Saturday evening. For someone who played such a key role in the first two Star Wars films, Gary Kurtz has been somewhat forgotten. That being said, the Kurtz panel was fascinating for one reason. His discussion of the original ending of Return of the Jedi. Now we've all heard before that Han Solo was originally going to die somewhere in the middle of Return of the Jedi, but that Lucas nixed the idea over Harrison Ford's objections. Now the cynics out there would say that Harrison Ford just wanted Han Solo to die to ensure that he wouldn't have to come back for any possible sequels. Kurtz felt, however, that Han Solo should die to add drama to the script. More newsworthy was the fact that the other was not originally supposed to be Princess Leia, who would be seen at the end of the movie becoming the new President of the Galaxy, while Luke abandons his erstwhile allies to go search the galaxy for his long-lost sister. What Kurtz describes is a more thoughtful ending with no Muppets. I like it. And that was This Week in Star Wars. Join us again next week for more news, notes, and developments from the galaxy far, far away. Visit www.thisweekinstarwars.com, the This Week in Star Wars Facebook page, or send your thoughts in an email to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. I welcome your comments, questions, and suggestions, as well as news submissions. This Week in Star Wars, we troll the web so you don't have to. This Week in Star Wars is not affiliated with Lucasfilm, its subsidiaries, or any other entity mentioned in this podcast. Star Wars, its characters, and creations are the property of Lucasfilm. All other trademarks are property of their respective trademark owners. This Week in Star Wars is intended for informational and entertainment purposes only. This podcast is copyright 2010, This Week in Star Wars. Invaluable technical assistance provided by WebStorm Interactive. News, comments, and questions can be directed to host at thisweekinstarwars.com. More information, links to stories presented, past episodes, and additional contact information are available at www.thisweekinstarwars.com. 